Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to discuss some frequently asked questions, FAQs about Google Workspace Education Plus. Um, first of all, some introductions. If you don't know us, I'm Dan Taylor. I'm the CEO of Apps Events and I'm here with my colleague, James Sayer. Hi, I'm James. I work here in Asia for Apps Events and I've worked with a few schools on getting them set up with Education Plus, both for trials and then rolling out for, for their entire schools. Definitely. And just to say as well, obviously, we're, we're an Education Plus partner. But we're also a Google PD partner. We're the longest established Google PD partner in the world, I believe, uh, 10 years now. So obviously, any help anyone needs in terms of Google training or even ISTE training, please get in touch. We're always uh, delighted to work with new schools. Um, so yeah, really quickly, um, FAQs. We get a lot of questions. It's possible to get a free trial for Google Workspace Education Plus, and we're getting a lot of the questions, um, the same questions. So we've made a document where we're going to go through these questions, and there's a link to the screen on the document. So James, if you want to bring it up, let's start and have a look at some of the FAQs. So the first one, uh, we, we mentioned before there's a free trial. Uh, so how long is the trial, and how many licenses does a school receive? But it recently changed when Google launched Google Workspace for Education and the Education Plus plan. It increased the trial up to 60 days with 50 licenses. And those licenses can be assigned to anybody within your school. We'd recommend you assign them to administrators or to teachers. Yeah, exactly. So pretty simple. Uh, we'll, we'll go through a bit about how you activate this, but we can activate this trial within a day. It's very quick. Uh, you get 60 days. Uh, and yeah, try everything. So you get all the features, you get all the teaching and learning features, and you get the security admin features. I recommend to check out our other video on YouTube where we talk about our five favorite things as well about Education Plus. Uh, so James, what's next? How do the staff licenses get distributed? Right, so when you uh, sign up for Education Plus licenses, you're actually, Google is licensing based upon the number of students. So if you have a 1,000 student school, then you would be you would obviously subscribe to 1000 education plus licenses and then staff licenses are issued at the ratio of four to one the staff licenses at that ratio are free so with 1000 students you would be given free 250 teacher licenses yep fantastic uh, i think i think that's pretty clear um so but a lot of people say well okay i've got more than a one to four ratio four to one ratio uh, how can the school then get licenses for all the staff? Yeah, and we went through a scenario in the in the FAQ doc, you can probably see. Yeah, if you've got a situation where you've got 100 students, for example, and 50 staff, with 100 students and 100 student licenses, of course, you're only going to be getting on that four to one ratio, you're only going to be getting 25 staff licenses. What Google requires for you to get up to the 50 licenses or however many staff licenses you need you just multiply the number of staff by four, and that's the number of student licenses you need. But bearing in mind, to, to get the full domain licensing, which is what Google requires, at a minimum, you must have all of your active students licensed, and that is yeah. active students licensed. And that brings us quite nicely onto the next question, because people always say, can I, just, can I just get licenses for part of my school, for the middle school, the high school? Uh, and that kind of is leads on from what you were saying before, James. Yeah, just continuing from that. Yeah, Google requires for the whole school to be licensed. There are some edge cases. For example, if students uh, have been suspended for whatever reason for a year or in an exchange program or anything like that, there are some edge cases. So speak to your Google partner, speak to us, speak to Google, and we, we can help out with that. Yeah, and one thing I just, just added the document as we're talking. Um, some schools keep uh, accounts live for, for X number of years after students graduate or X number of months, and these school lever accounts uh, do not count to the number. So don't worry if you've got these lever accounts. I mean, basically, Google assesses it on what, let's say you've got your domain, schoolxyz.com with a Google. It's everyone on that domain. So, if you, for example, you might have different Google domains for your middle and high school and different Google instances. In that case, you could just get it for the middle school, but only if you had a separate Google uh, workspace instance for that middle school. If it's all on the same one, if, if you log on your admin console, and it's all in the same place, you have to get licenses for all the students. Yeah, just to add on to that as well. In the scenario where it's a district of schools or a chain of schools, maybe you've got a school in Thailand and a school in, in Dubai, for example, 
one school may not be on Google. It may not be on Microsoft and the other school is on Google, uh, but you want to get the whole group of schools licensed. Speak to, speak to us, speak to your Google partner, and you can get information on how that licensing works because it's a little bit different. It is a yeah. little bit different if those schools are under the same domain. In that scenario, because obviously you're not going to be licensing all of the Microsoft schools, but there is something that can be done. So come and speak to us and we can help out. Yeah, please talk to us. We've we've been helping schools do this and we know exactly what to do. But it needs us to talk to Google, basically. Um, so there's always some confusion. Like, obviously, is Apps Events a Google partner? Can, can schools go direct to purchase this? How does that all work, James? Yeah, so the way Education Plus is set up is that schools do need to go through a partner or a reseller to access Education Plus. I've been working a lot of schools, and of course, schools want to be able to trust um, their partner. For Apps Events, we are a PD partner and we're a reseller partner as well. There's a little link down there at the bottom in the dock. Click through to that and you can see our listing. Yeah, absolutely. You need to be with an official reseller with Google. Yeah, and, and remember, it's a bit confusing because there's, there's also the teaching and learning upgrade where you can purchase yourself via the admin control panel using a school credit card or your own credit card. But this one, the Education Plus, which actually we do recommend because it covers all your students, um, is only available through a Google reselling partner. Yes, that's right. It, I mean, it is good that administrators can now go into the admin console and get those teaching and le learning licenses. If they just want a few for a few of their staff, that's, that's a great way to go. Definitely. Great. So what? why does the school need to transfer the account to AppSense? This obviously looks a bit scary when you log on. As a reseller, you get a code, and it says you've got to give a reseller access to your domain. Uh, but we can hopefully mitigate some of that. So, we, so you know, obviously, we don't want to get access to your domain. Uh, how does this work, James? Yeah, exactly. I'm speaking to a lot of schools, and the first question is, why have I got to transfer my account? What you're actually doing, you're essentially making a connection with the reseller when you're doing that. And there's two different stages to this. When you assign your account to your reseller, your reseller does get access to your account and to your admin console. Now, you may want that because you may want your reseller to help you assign licenses within your console. If you have any concerns about that whatsoever, it's very, very easy to turn off that admin access. During that whole process of transferring your account to your reseller, there's a number of um, documents, uh, privacy policies and so on that Google shows, which you can read through so you can see in detail all of the access. But if you ever want to turn off the access, it's very, very simple um, just to deselect a checkbox in your admin console. I think we'll show this maybe at the end of this, Dan, we'll go through that process. Sounds good, sounds good. Fantastic, I think that's pretty clear. Um, trial licenses, so uh, how, do, how do you assign licenses to students? So we've got two separate situations. We've got, you've got the 50 trial licenses, how do we assign them, which we recommend to do manually. And then later on, we've got how do you assign all your licenses to the school. So let's first of all talk about the trial licenses. Yeah, there's a couple of ways to go through assigning the trial licenses. Probably the easiest is just to go through to the users section in your admin console and select your users manually. Exactly. Yes, you can do it sync. You could go through, you could go through um, do your AD sync on GCDS, or you could uh, upload a CSV. But honestly, with 50 licenses, just go to the admin console, select your users. Yeah, exactly. There's only 50 to do. Uh, yeah, I concur on that. Um, so let's say the trial's over, and for some reason, you decide not to purchase Education Plus. Uh, does Apps Events still have access to the school account? We would have access to the account if you have still enabled that. I mean, obviously, we have a service agreement with all schools, which in the agreement, we agree never to access the account without first gaining authorization. However, you can simply transfer away from your reseller very easily in your admin console. And of course, you can remove admin access immediately. So there really is no privacy security concern there at all. Yeah, definitely. And we recommend this. We actually, any school we work with, we send it, we send these instructions and we recommend as soon as we get access to remove our uh, our access to the admin console. And then if the school decides not to purchase, we recommend we send them instructions to remove our access straight away. Uh, it's better for us as well. Um, so what about if a school wants to go ahead and purchase uh, Education Plus after the trial? Yeah, there's a couple of steps and probably the biggest one is that once you've once the school has decided how many licenses they need, they fill out a student verification letter. 
Now on that letter, they simply put on their letterhead, they put on their how many full-time students they have, and they obviously add the school signatory. It could be the director of IT, it may be the principal, whoever the school signatory is for this would be added to that letter. The school then sends that letter, obviously emails that verification letter to, to Apps Events, and we then forward the application on to Google, and we fill out how many licenses you need. Google then takes, I mean, actually their service time is 48 hours for this, but we say give it up to a week for Google to respond and check everything out. They come back and usually say, yes, we agree with that number of students, and then Google produces an offer for the number of licenses, which should tally up to the verification letter. And then obviously we go back then to the school and say, okay, Google's approved this. Are you still looking to move forward with that? Yeah, exactly. Then we make an invoice, school makes payment, and we sign the licenses. So that that pro part of the process happens as quickly as uh, as you can um, do that. Yeah, and I, I mean, it does say two days for Google to get back to you, but we said a whole process could take about a week. And I think what a lot of schools want to do is they want to sync the subscription with other services they have. So yeah. do think ahead a little bit on that is what what is the date you want to begin the subscription? Definitely. Great. I think that covers the next two points. Uh, Multi-year discounts. There is a discount if you commit to two years or three years. And how does this work? Yeah. So if a school is willing to or able to pay up front for the subscription, they're able to access a 5% discount for two years and then a 10% discount for three years for the entire licensing of the school. Yep. Uh, but important to say, we have to invoice in advance for the two or three years. So if you're willing to do this, it's great. You get a good discount, but we have to invoice in advance. And that's a good deal, you know, in case Google ever increases the price. I don't think it'll happen, but, you, you know, you're locked into this price for, for three years. Absolutely. Uh, alumni accounts, we've mentioned this. You don't have to pay for alumni accounts. Um, assigning licenses. So we mentioned how to assign your trial licenses, <laughs> but how do we recommend to do it if... You know, once you've gone live, you've paid for Education Plus, you've got maybe a thousand licenses to do. Do you, do you want to jump and show this or should we just uh, show this on the screen, James? Yeah, let me just pull up an admin console. So give me a moment. Okay, so assigning licenses. Well, obviously, we've got an admin console here. This is just a training domain, so there's nothing to worry about privacy here. If you just click through onto users, and we're going to well, obviously we see here that we've got all of our OUs on the left hand side and a list of our users on the right. What I can actually do is I can click into any one of these OUs. For example, this has just got a single user. It's good for demonstration purposes. Now I could select that user individually. And at the top right here, there's more drop down box. And actually, if I had license to licenses to assign, I could then click on assign license. Alternatively, if I click on uh, this OU, if I select the checkbox at the top here, it will select every user in that OU. Then I can simply click on the more dropdown. Oh, actually, it appears here. Assign licenses at the top here, and you click on assign licenses, and whatever licenses you have in your enabled on your domain, you can then assign those to that OU. Fantastic. Um, great, James. I think we're almost at the end. Is there anything else you want to show from the admin console while we're here? Yeah, I think we're going to have a quick look at managing your account. So let me just hide this so we can see a little more easily. On the left-hand side here, I think you probably see account settings. If you are looking to transfer your account to a reseller, this is where you would do this from. You go to account settings, and then we'll scroll down here, just give me a moment, down to account management. If I click on account management, this is where you're going to be able to enable that reseller access. Now, what you can see here, under reseller access, because we've already enabled reseller access here. What you can see here, enable reseller access to the admin console to manage your domain. And this is actually turned off. So we have disabled reseller access to this domain so the reseller doesn't have access to the admin console. Uh, they wouldn't be able to support us, for example, on assigning licenses or anything else. We could change that very easily click on the edit icon and enable reseller access and then click on save. And now we've given the reseller, which happens to be apps events, we've given the reseller access to the admin console for this school. The second thing I just wanted to quickly show you was how do you transfer your account to a reseller? We can actually email you this link. The, the easiest thing is 
just, we'll, we'll send you a link to the support doc. You need to retrieve a transfer token. And this is what the screen looks like. So this really only takes a couple of minutes. To get your transfer token, which you need to send to Apps Events to be able to transfer your account to the reseller to us, you'd come into this page here, retrieve transfer token. You would then confirm that you have read the terms and conditions for a trial, all of these terms and conditions documents down here. Once you've confirmed that, you would enter the Apps Events reseller public identifier, which we would send to you. So we would give you a unique code that you paste into that field there, and then you would confirm reseller identifier. That will then produce a transfer token, which you would send to us, the school would send to Apps Events. Again, just a quick reminder, make sure that you have, of course, read through the terms and conditions here, make sure you understand what's going on. We've got additional support articles on that. We can, of course, talk you through that as well. Fantastic. So, James, I think that pretty much brings to the end. We've got one final point about security and investigation tool, and we've just given a link to a video. Um, thanks very much, guys. Please let us know in the comments what you think of this video. Uh, let us know what else you're interested in. We want to make a lot more videos about Google Workspace Education Plus and the premium edition, so let us know in the comments what you do. Please subscribe to our channel. It really helps us. Please like the video. Um, and, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. If you would like a trial, uh, where should people go, James? Right, if you want to try out the link, I think is down at the bottom of the screen. You get a 60 day free trial, appsevents.com forward slash workspace. Fantastic. Thank you very much, James. And thanks all for watching. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, everybody, for watching. If you've got any other questions, just reach out to Dan or myself, and we can help you on those anytime.